Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Buddhika Lienegi. So today I would like to talk about how to write the electron configuration. Let's go and learn the theory and practice how to write the configuration for first 30 elements. Let's talk about electronic structure of the atom. The electronic structure, the central is the nucleus. At the nucleus, protons and neutrons are located. Surrounding the nucleus, electrons are orbiting in specific energy levels. These energy levels we called a shells. Shells, the symbol is N. Shells can be 1, 2, 3, 4, any positive integer. Shell number 1 is the energy level closer to the nucleus, that is the lowest energy level. Now, each of these energy levels or shells, we can subdivide into subshells. These subshells are four types. We use lowercase s, p, d, f, four types of subshells. And subshells again divide into orbitals or inside the subshells, there are some other sets we call orbitals. These orbitals have the same name as subshells, s orbital, p orbitals, d orbitals and f orbitals. Now let's learn in each shell what are the types of subshells and orbitals. Shell number 1, only S subshell present, always S subshell containing only S orbital. So S orbitals are spherical in shape. S orbital I indicated here uh, for convenience, a uh, square, where it's actually spherical in shape. The square can occupy the maximum 2 electrons. In any S orbital, total is 2 electrons. Shell number 2, the second energy level. There are two types of subshells present, S subshell and the P subshell. So S subshell always one S orbital, P subshell there are three P orbitals. These P orbitals are dumbbell shaped. So there are three P orbitals along the three Cartesian axis. They lie along X axis, Y axis and the Z axis. So we name these three P orbitals as PX, PY and PZ. These three p orbitals, you can see, they are degenerate. They have equal energy, equal same shape and the size. Next, energy level 3 or shell number 3. Shell number 3 containing three types of subshells, S subshell, P subshell and the D subshell. S subshell, only one S orbital. P subshell, three sets, three p orbitals. D subshell, there are five D orbitals. Fourth one, shell number four, S, P, D, F. Four types of subshells present. S subshell, S orbital, P subshell, 3 P orbitals, D subshell, 5 D orbitals, and F subshell, 7 F orbitals. Now you can see the each orbital as a box. So in each orbital, maximum electrons we can put, two electrons. So you can see two electrons in shell number one, shell number two, two electrons in S and two electrons in each P. So maximum is eight. So if you add two electrons into each box in shell number three, you can count total 18. And two electrons in each box in shell number four, the total electrons in shell number four is 32. Another way we can Find out the total number of electrons in any shell without counting using this formula. 2 times n squared. This n is a shell number squared times 2. Let's apply one by one. Uh, shell number 1. So 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So maximum electrons in shell number 1 or energy level closer to the nucleus 2. And then shell number 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 8. So 2 electrons here. 6 here. Total 8. Shell number 2, maximum electrons, 8. And 3 squared, shell number 3, 9. 9 times 2, 18. So 2, 6 and then 10 for D orbitals. Shell number 3, maximum electrons, uh, 18 then. And shell number 4, maximum electrons, 4 squared, 16. 16 times 2, 32 electrons. Next slide, let's go and practice electron configuration writing for first 30 elements.
electron configuration writing. So electron filling from lowest energy level to the highest energy level, lower level to the high level, gradually. This is what we call Aufbau principle. You can see a diagram given in the right hand side, Aufbau diagram, an increasing order from 1s to 8s, energy is increasing. So, electron field from 1s to gradually next highest energy level 2s and then 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s and so on. So, you need to follow a zigzag pattern here 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s and then 3d, 4p, 5s. So, each of these s orbitals maximum electrons add 2. 1s2, 2s2, 3s2, 4s2, 5s2. And each p orbitals maximum electrons can add 6. 2p6, 3p6, 4p6, 5p6 and so on. And d orbitals maximum electrons can add 10. 3d10, 4d10, 5d10. And f orbitals maximum electrons you can add 14. For 4f14, 5f14, 6f14. The same diagram I have written here as a step. 1s, 2s, next 2p and then 3s, 3p. So until you are familiar with electron configuration writing, you can follow one of these diagrams. Uh, it will guide you the electron filling pattern. Now let's start writing electron configuration from hydrogen, the first element. Hydrogen, atomic number 1, 1 electron, filled into the lowest energy level, 1s1. So if we write the configuration like this, the 1 meaning is n number is 1, energy level is 1, s is s orbital. Superscript 1 is how many electrons in that s orbital. Next element, helium. Atomic number 2, 2 electrons, 1s2. And then lithium, 3 electrons. After completely filled 1s, next energy level is 2s, 2s1. Then beryllium, 4 electrons, 1s2, 2s2. Now, 1s orbital and 2s orbital completely filled. Next highest is 2p. So, in boron, start filling 2p level, 2p1. Carbon, 6 electrons, 2p2. Nitrogen, 7, 2p3. Oxygen, 8, 2p4. Fluorine, 9, 2p5. And neon, 10 electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Now you can see at the 10th element, in neon, p level completely filled p6. So 2p6, that is the maximum electron 6. And if we have one more electron, now you need to jump into next highest energy level 3s. Let's write electron configuration for next 10 elements starting sodium. Sodium atomic number 11. So 2p6 is our 10th electron and the 11th electron 3s1. Magnesium 3s2. And next highest is 3p level. Now we started filling electrons to 3p. 3p1, silicon 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6. Now we completed P level by adding maximum electron 6 at argon. Next highest is 4s. So potassium is 4s1, calcium is 4s2. Let's go and find out the next 10 elements. This field electron starting a 21th element scandium. Scandium atomic number 21, 21 electrons. The 4s2 completely filled in the last slide. Now after 4s, next highest energy is 3d. So let's start filling 3d. D level, we can fill up to 10 electrons. So 3d1, 3d2, 3d4, 3d5, 6, 7, 3d8, 3d9 in copper and zinc 3d10. Now 3d level completely filled and zinc level. And if we have one more electron, next highest energy level is 4p. I hope now you have idea how to fill the electron configuration following this Aufbau principle.
Next, uh, anomalous configuration. So what are these anomalous configuration? The meaning is some of the electron configurations are not following the Aufbau pattern. There are two places in 3D series, chromium and the copper. If we write the chromium configuration, chromium atomic number 24. It is argon 4 is to 3D4. However, if it were 3D4 is taking one electron from 4S and it becomes 4S1 3D5. This is the most accurate configuration following this anomalous behavior. And the next uh, one is copper. Copper is atomic number 29, so argon 4S2 3D9. So 3D9 D shell subshell taking one electron from a subshell to become 3d 10 4 is 1 this is most stable configuration the reason to become this anomalous configuration behavior is half filled 3d subshell and fully or completely filled d subshell d5 and d10 are more stable than partially filled d subshells the same pattern is following the next 4D series, molybdenum, silver and gold. So these are anomalous configurations. So when we are writing the configurations for chromium, copper, molybdenum, silver and the gold, you need to follow this anomalous configurations. Next topic is valency electrons. What are these valency electrons? Valency shell and valency electrons. Valency shell means outermost shell. Or another way, highest n number shell we call valency shell. Valency electron means outermost shell electrons. How many total electrons in outer shell? Let's take some example. Nitrogen, atomic number 7. So if you write the configuration, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. You can see shell number 1, 2 electrons. Shell number 2, there are 2 subshells, S and P. S containing 2 electrons, P contain 3 electrons. So larger N number here is 2, shell number 2. That is our valency shell. And total number of electrons in the valency shell is 2 plus 3, total electrons. Shell number 2 is the valency shell, valence electrons 5. Fluorine, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, again shell number 2 is our valency shell, total number of electrons 2 plus 5 is 7. Selenium, argon 4s2, 3d10, 4p4, you can see shell number 4 and shell number 3. 4 is the bigger number, that is our valency shell, total number of valence electrons, you need to add together 2 and 4, 6. Next, iodine, krypton, 5s2, 4d10, 5p5. So, shell number 5 is our valence shell, total valence electrons, 2 plus 5, 7. Now, you can see a pattern about uh, valence electrons and the group number. For main group elements, main group means group 1a to 8a, the 8 taller groups in the periodic table. Those main group elements, valence electron count is equal to their group number. Let's take nitrogen, nitrogen in group 5A, so 5 valence electrons. Fluorine in group 7A, 7 valence electrons. Selenium in group uh, 6A, just below the oxygen, 6 valence electron. Iodine is a halogen, halogen column is 7A, 7 valence electrons. So, only for the main group elements, group number is equal to valence electron count. But this is different for transition elements and the inner transition elements. The next topic you need to practice is how to write noble gas notation. Noble gas notation is we shrink these long configurations into shorter versions, adding noble gases. So you can check out that video I have added, Noble Gas Configuration Writing. Uh, just click on this link and then follow Noble Gas Shortcut for 
same elements uh, we practiced here for thirty elements. Thank you all for watching. If you find this helpful, please subscribe to the channel and comment any questions or any specific area if you would like to discuss in the comment section.